Good morning, my medical friends. Today we'll be talking about the topic anemia. To start with a case, a 35-year-old woman, 24 weeks pregnant, having fatigue for many months. She is not visiting any obstetricians and is not taking vitamins. She has developed a taste for eating ice. There is no other significant complaint. Family history and past history are negative. She is a non-smoker as well as a non-drinker. So, the physical examination is revealing conjunctiva which is very pale. Nails had spooning. There is second and fourth systolic murmur at the left lower sternal border. Stools are negative for any occult blood. Lab reports shows hemoglobin very low 7.1 grams per deciliter. Hematocrit only 23%. WBC us on the lower side 5400 millimeter cube. Platelets are falling in the normal range somewhere around 4.5 lakhs per millimeter cube. Main corpuscular volume is low as you can see. Red cell distribution width is also in the normal range. So what could be the diagnosis? Definitely this is anemia. A major public health problem and especially in country like India. Now, how to define anemia? Anemia is defined as a decrease in the circulating red blood cell mass. You have to keep in mind it is decrease in the red cell circulating blood mass. And the usual criteria is hemoglobin less than 12 grams per deciliter or hematocrit. 36% or less in women and to talk about males, it is hemoglobin less than 14 grams per deciliter with hematocrit values 41% and less. So here I would like to emphasize the point that anemia is decreased in the red cell blood count which leads to tissue hypoxia. Now. Uh, as you can see, I have uploaded a slide showing the hemoglobin and the MCHC values as per the WHO criteria. So, adult females, pregnant females, as well as adolescent boys and girls are the special risk groups for anemia. Talking about gradings of anemia, the next important question which comes to our mind when we look to the hemoglobin levels, we can define three grades on the basis of the level of hemoglobin. Mild anemia, 8 to 12 grams per deciliter. Moderate anemia, where the hemoglobin levels falling between 5 to 8 grams per deciliter. And severe anemia, with the hemoglobin value less than 5 grams per deciliter. My friends, keep in mind that I am discussing hemoglobin levels with perspective to India and the subcontinent, not in the western world. Talking about some very important clinical features of anemia. Number one, symptoms of anemia are due to tissue hypoxia as I had already told you before. And the tissue hypoxia leads to arousal of the various compensatory mechanisms in our body. And these presents as the symptoms. There is generalized muscle weakness, tiredness and easy fatigability. Why? Because the oxygen carrying capacity of the blood is low. And therefore, there is easy fatigability, tiredness and weakness. The skin is showing pallor as well as there is pallor in the mucous membrane. A very well visible symptom of anemia. Pallor can be observed as you can see in the picture in the palmar creases of the hand. We can observe pallor on the skin. We can observe pallor on the tip of the nose, in the ear lobes as well as Conjunctiva, the lower palpebral conjunctiva is showing pain. This is a very characteristic symptom of anemia. Now, another important feature of anemia is coelonychia. That is spoon-shaped nails, a very characteristic symptom of anemia which appears when the hemoglobin levels falls very low along with the brittle nails. Other important symptoms include the cardiovascular manifestations all arising because of the tissue hypoxia with the compensatory mechanisms operating at the level of heart which tries to provide more oxygen to the body leading to palpitations, tachycardia, murmurs, angina, cardiac failure. 
There are respiratory symptoms leading to dizziness, breathlessness, increase in the respiratory rate can also occur. There are various CNS manifestations again because of decrease in the oxygen content leading to lethargy, headache, faintness along with the dimness of vision. Renal manifestations includes anuria and oliguria. Now, what diagnostic test should we apply to judge a patient of anemia? Of course, the peripheral smear is the essential component to evaluate anemia, which shows microcytic, hypochromic RBCs, especially in case of iron deficiency anemia. But there are various grades of anemias, various types of anemias, which have different peripheral smear pictures, which I will be talking about in my next upcoming video. The complete blood cell count again is very important in such patients. We should go for RBC count, WBC count, hemoglobin content, hematocrit values, platelet count, reticulocyte count, reticulocyte index, red cell indices. All these are very important to, to evaluate a patient of anemia. The red cell indices specially includes the MCV, MCH, MCHC and the color index. This can give us a descriptive dis uh, value of the patient of anemia. There are the various adult reference ranges which is uploaded here. You can see the various re adult reference range for the red blood cells. Moving on to the classification of anemia. On the basis of the morphology, how the peripheral smear is appearing, we have got the Winthrop's classification of anemia. In the peripheral smear, the, if the picture is normocytic, normochromic type, which shows MCV and NCHC to be normal, they, uh, this kind of anemia is known as normocytic, normochromic type, and it is seen in acute blood loss anemias and also the hemolytic anemias, except thalassemia, is normocytic, normochromic type. Normocytic, hypochromic pictures is seen after chronic hemorrhage. Macrocytic, normochromic picture is seen if the MCV is increased, MCHC is normal. All the megaloblastic anemia are macrocytic normochromic anemias and macrocytic hypochromic is seen secondary to the liver diseases. Microcytic normochromic anemia is seen in the chronic infections and microcytic hypochromic picture which is a very very common picture which is seen in cases where MCV and NCHC is decreased and this includes iron deficiency anemia and thalassemia. Very, very important anemias. And in the next video, I will be uh, telling about the differences between IDA and thalassemia. Just to move, uh, before I move ahead, I will just uh, highlight what do I mean by normocytic and hypochromic. Normocytic, microcytic and microcytic are the variables which depends on the values of MCV, MCH and MCHC. If the red cell volume is normal, it is normocytic. If the volume is greater, it is macrocytic. And if the volume is less, it is microcytic. Normochromia and hypochromia depends on the hemoglobin concentration in the RBC. So, normochromic anemias are those anemias where the hemoglobin concentration is normal. Hypochromic uh, is the condition where uh, hemoglobin concentration is less. Okay, moving on to the next important class classification that is the width base or the etiological classification of anemia. It is based on actually the cause of anemia. What is the cause? Cause is either abnormal blood loss which is referred to as a hemorrhagic cause. The cause can be excessive destruction of the RBC which is a hemolytic cause. And the cause can be irregular uh, production of the RBC which can be a dyshemopoietic cause. So on the basis of the cause of anemia, we have acute blood loss and chronic blood loss anemias under the hemorrhagic anemias. Then the hemolytic anemias include those anemias where there are defects in the, uh, the developmental defects in RBC leading to increased destruction of the RBC. This can be corpuscular defects like sickle cell anemia, spherocytosis and thalassemia. There can be various extra corpuscular defects like defects lying outside the RBC as a result of which the RBC are degraded. So this includes antibodies against RBC and hypersplenism. Then this can be due to decreased RBC production which can be again because of the dietary deficiencies like the iron deficiency anemia, vitamin B12 deficiency anemia 
folic acid deficiency anemia. They can be inactive marrow leading to the aplastic anemias and various chronic renal diseases decreasing the erythropoietin production and finally affecting the RBC production in the bone marrow. So these are the various uh, etiological classifications of anemia and each topic is again a detailed descriptive topic. So I will keep on uploading my next videos discussing each topic in detail. So thanks for watching my topic. Like, subscribe and please do not forget to press the bell icon. Thanks and uh, please watch my next upcoming video. Thank you. Yeah.